Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when I feel like it o'clock. I'm Pearl Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearl of Wisdom. Coming to you on the fly here. There has been, I'm going to be talking about Mitch Marner. Rumors, rumors, rumors. They're rumors. Whatever. A lot of talk about fans wanting to trade Mitch Marner from Toronto. Now, I proposed this trade before they signed Mitch Marner. Uh, I I proposed them to trade it, and I got slammed by Toronto Maple Leafs fans for even considering or thinking some sort of thing. But um, after the move of Tavares and all of that, I looked and said, you know what, the teams with depth win in this league. It's not that I don't like Marner. He's a 100-point winger or close to it. He hasn't actually hit 100 points yet, but he's been on the uh, certain project, project trajectory. Yes, that's it. I think that's the word. He's been heading that way. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> to a 100-point player. Um, pro-rated, he's been pretty darn close. If not, he would have hit it by now. Huge. And I thought he was huge then. Now, I did some deals. One of them would have had you had Dobson, Beauvillier, um, Dobson, Bo- Beauvillier, uh, Bailey and a, another first on top of that, which they used to trade for Pajo. So you would have had that first as well. And uh, I don't think Bailey was it. I can't remember who it was, but it was something like that. So you would have had Noah Dobson right now on defense in Tampa Bay. You wouldn't have had Marner. You would have had possibly a good character guy like Bailey. I don't think it was but Bailey, though. It was, oh, no, no, no. Sorry, you would have had Wallstrom. That's what it was. It was Bovillier, Wallstrom, Dobson. That's who you'd have right now on Toronto. So you'd still have cap space. You wouldn't have Marner, but you'd have a guy, a, B- a guy like Bovillier who's approaching 70, 80 points. Uh, Wallstrom looks like he could be a 25 goal scorer. And then they would have had cap room on top of it to build their roster on defense and all that kind of stuff like that. Now, before I go on here, I want to say. There's been some other great YouTubers who also pointed out that Toronto would not be in this place had COVID not hit and the cap went up like they thought and they could have added and all of those things that way as well. That's possible. But the fact is we are where we are now. People are because Marner had a poor playoffs. They don't think he's worth his contract anymore. All of those sort of things like that. I totally disagree. A kid had a poor playoffs. You can find lots of kids that had a poor playoffs out there. I I don't know if he was injured. He might have been injured. He looked kind of injured to me. I'm not even saying all that. I'm saying it's possible that we that, that, that they could trade him simply because of cap issues and needing more depth in their lineup. So let's go look at, first of all, what I said about Marner being uh, close to a 100-point player. Well, what we what do we have on our hands here? He's making a, almost eleven million, and by the way, he's making almost eleven million for quite a while. He does not have a no movement clause as of now, which is great. He can go anywhere um, till two thousand twenty five. That contract's not going to look bad by then, as long as he doesn't get injured or anything like that. So, as a whole, the player has a lot of value to stay on the team. If they decide to just keep on growing, hope the cap starts going up and just adding that way. Is that going to make them a contender for next year? Mm, Probably not. Um, Unless Dubas does some some miracle work and brings in some cheap guys that overplay their value a lot. It's probably going to be pretty similar than this year. I could be wrong. Tell me what you think down there. But he had... 67 points in 55 games. I didn't do the math. I'm doing this on the fly. Uh, That's pretty darn close to a 100-point season. Two years before, he had 94 and 82, and he's two years older, and he's going to be older yet again. He is only 24 years old, so his upside is still very good. He could be an over 100-point game, uh, points a game player. So let's quickly go into it. Um, there's a few things I think that uh, Toronto will be looking at here. 
Uh, they either want to go, oh yeah, I want to mention also, we'll go into Toronto here. This is going to be a long video, but that's okay. Um, there's a couple guys that you really want to sign if you can. Zach Hyman is a UFA. Do you, it seemed to me when you watch this playoffs that grit and determination and warrior-like attitude was not as not present in this team this year. Now, these players are going to learn from this. They're going to learn what it means to be a playoff team next year. I'm positive Matthews is going to be uh, even better. I'm positive that Marner is going to have more of that attitude in there. And that in itself may be enough. But if we think not, and we're going by what fans, a lot of fans want to remove them, let's see what we would get in this situation. We want to sign Zach Hyman or somebody similar, or another person like Coleman in Tampa Bay, who is a free agent right now, who's a very similar player as Zach Hyman. Those heart and soul put up some points, can play guys. So we don't want Simmons back. Simmons can't play anymore. Sorry. He's not a player anymore. He's okay for a fourth line, but we're talking about guys that can play a fairly regular shift, play with a lot of heart, put their bodies out there. Guys like Corey Perry in Montreal or Gallagher, those are the reasons why Montreal are going where they are. You notice Corey Perry played for Dallas a year before? Warrior. The guy is a warrior. So we're looking to sign guys like Zach Hyman. We don't want more Alexander Kerfoots. You let him go. You know, he's 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 a, he's an okay player, but he's not a warrior. Um, even Nylander, Marner, Tavares, Matthews, they can add that into their game, whatever the case may be. But we're looking for guys like that. So we're going to have to re-sign. We're going to want to re-sign um, Zach Hyman for sure. And, of course, we know Morgan Riley is going to have to be re-signed. I've heard trading him. I think... We can all look at that down the road, but I mean, with this defense, <laughs> it's going to be really hard to bring in another guy like that, and you need a guy like that. So we're making room for that as well. So the first thing we're going to look at is some teams, and I'm going to look at the Detroit Red Wings first, that have been rebuilding for a while, maybe on the precipice of wanting to move a little more forward this year. Detroit looked really good closer to the end of the year. Uh, they may be looking at a young guy like Marner at 100 points to be able to play beside Dylan or uh, Dylan Larkin to give him a guy to feed the puck to. They just picked up Jacob Verana, who's got a cup ring in his uh, hand from uh, the Washington Capitals. Uh, their lineup is really starting to form here. Michael Rasmussen would look up like it looks like he's progressing there. Big, solid guy. They could, I think they could have some interest here. Here's the thing. This, if we're looking at Detroit, we're looking at basically getting nothing back as far as players for the roster. We're looking at signing Zach Hyman. Uh, we're looking at the future money for uh, Riley. And prospects picks now if that's the case the return may seem underwhelming i'm pretty sure um 11 million dollars in the cap world that we're living in right now even for a 100 point player who's worth the contract and i believe he is worth the contract is a little much to be uh to be taken for any team and they know that the value is going to be um, the, the, they know the value of that uh, Detroit, especially Stevie Eisenman, knows the value. Honestly, in this situation, um, they may want they may offer up Tyler Bertuzzi. You take a little bit back. He is a restricted free agent now, though, and you'd have to re-sign him, and you're getting $5 million. He's probably going to get somewhere in the $5 million mark. Um, so we're then we're losing... We're losing cap space already on that. Let's say we only do Tyler Bertuzzi um, and then some prospects. I think you may get like uh, Wallstrom or, or William Vlander. 
maybe their first round draft pick this year. I bet you they won't let you touch Maurice Sider in that situation, in that scenario. Because you're getting so much cap space back. If you want no cap space back, you might get their first. And William Volander, who is a, who is a late first round pick in 2020, and is progressing okay, slowly progressing. He was always going to be slowly progressing. He's a big defenseman um, who won't be ready for a couple of years. And you're first. And then you can sign all your guys and maybe add a Coleman. You got a Hyman. You maybe maybe add a Coleman. Maybe add to your defense. Like look at a guy like Martinez for a short deal in Vegas. He is uh, looking at about four million dollars a year right now. Um, I'll show you here. Uh, he's looking at about four million dollars at as we stand. And uh, let me find him here. Martinez, Alec Martinez, Vegas Golden Knights, played with Jake Muzzin in in uh, in L.A. May not ask need more than four million, especially if he's going to go play with Jake. So you got a right def- uh, or uh, is he a righty or a lefty? It doesn't say. Uh, left defenseman. You got a left defenseman uh, who probably can play both sides. They can play. I know he can play both sides. He played both sides in Vegas. They play with Muzzin. You got Riley. You got a sol- fairly deep, solid defensive core. You have uh, you have more depth. You have more grit, but you don't have Marner. I think that's kind of what you're looking there. What would you say to that if you are a Leafs fan or a Detroit fan? I'm going to send this out to my Facebook groups, and we'll see what they have to say about it. Uh, L.A. Kings. We'll look at the L.A. Kings as well. Um, They are a team that has said, verbally said, Blake has come out and said that the rebuild is over. Rebuild is over in L.A. Uh, I'm going to try to get this, keep this short. Uh, as, as much as I possibly can. But some guys that you would look at here, they, first of all, have the cap space. They don't need to sign anybody right now. Maybe a- a- Adrian Kempe later, Lemieux, he's not going to demand too, too much. Uh, Athanasiu is just rebuilding his career. He might make a little more, not overly too much. Um, really not much coming up that they have to sign. Get Gabriel Velarde may be something that's another year or two away. But if they're really serious about wanting to win right now, this is a team that might be able to outbid Detroit from what I just said. Now, if they do, they go back to Detroit, you might get more. Uh, right? That's the way it is. You get as many teams as possible to in here. Now, if you're not going to take anything back from L.A., like you're not getting any money back, you could might could probably get their first this year, which is a pretty high pick. And uh, you might be able to get Gabriel Velarde that I just said. Center is not the position that Toronto is really looking for. You've got some pre, uh, Toronto's got some pretty good depth up the middle. However, if you're not going to re-sign Kerfoot, it's possible you could look at another center there. But I think wingers are going to be the the, what they're looking for, which is actually a bonus. But the thing is, when L.A. played Gabriel Velarde on the left side, I thought he looked better on than up the middle. So you could consider that a really big, he's solid, six foot two, 185. He's still grown. He's only 21 years old. So Gabriel Velarde and Tobias Bjornfort, who is also under a low contract. Yes, you're taking a little bit of money back. Eventually, you're going to have to sign these guys to some bridges, but the cap's going to go up for Toronto, and they'll have more room to sign these guys. I love Tobias Bjornfort. I know they love him too. If you if we absolutely have to go with the righty, you could go with Matt Waugh, who's seven hundred thousand now, but going up to three million. Matt Roy, I should say, um, solid, good, five six. I know that Toronto would be better off with a right hander. That right-handers are hard to find. And I said, you, Martinez can play right. And we're making, we're doing something here where you can sign a guy like Martinez and you don't have to sign Martinez. He's 34 to a long-term contract. 
unless somebody outbids us, then whatever. I guess we're out, or he doesn't want to go to Toronto. But we can look for guys like that if for Toronto now that we have the cap space and we traded Marner. So Velarde, Tobias Bjornfort, and they're in their first this year. I think they may go with this if Detroit pushes the envelope. And but and I don't think I'm not sure that Detroit will push the envelope much more than this. I think that's kind of what we're looking at here if we're not getting anything back. All right? Um, these all came from letters, by the way. They're letters from everybody. You know, what if LA? What if this? What if that? Send your letters. We love your letters. Also, hitting the subscribe and the bell helps the channel a lot. If you could go ahead and do that, that would be great. Finally, the New York Rangers, who seem to be in every rumor about everybody, um, I had lots of letters on this one, so I'm going to take a look at it. Um, but the thing is, if we go, if if you were to go with the New York Rangers, uh, almost certainly here, we're going to have to take salary back. So we're going to have to be happy with the players we get back here. And, uh, you know, it, it might be dicey to be able to sign Riley later. So I think if the Rangers want to give this a shot, and I'm not sure if they would or not, um, you can tell me if you're a Rangers fan, if you would want to do it, because you're going to have a lot after signing Mika Zibanejad, uh, and you've got Panarin. You're going to have Marner at 11, Zibanejad at probably 9 or 9, maybe 10, 9, maybe 10, and then Panarin at 11. So, you know, maybe we're back, they're back in the same situation as Toronto is in. I think it would definitely you, we would there there would definitely have to be some money taken back. Buknevich is a restricted free agent right now. You could grab him. Uh, you know um, Dylan Strom. You know these are guys filler guys to fill out the roster who are on short terms. You could probably sign them to short terms, and if you don't want to sign them back, that's okay. So by the time Riley needs a contract, which is what after after next year. You can work on that and make some room and still sign them, but still be a contender next year. And then for defensemen, that's where it kind of gets dicey because there's uh, the Rangers' defense is not really great as it is. They've got some really good guys coming up like Schneider, uh, who for some reason they don't. Oh, that's their minors uh, for prospects. Uh, Schneider, who for some reason – they don't have here um, or Matthew Robertson who's in college excellent defenseman maybe you could pick up something like that I don't think Schneider I think Schneider is off the table honestly he had a killer freaking season and uh, I just don't think they want he had a killer season in junior more offense than uh, anybody really anticipated he's big he's huge he's mobile uh, they could have just got an absolute steal where they picked Schneider there. Why don't they have him in? I'm going to have to call the cap-friendly people. Tell me why they don't have Schneider here in their prospects list. Or anywhere for that matter. I don't see him anywhere. Do you see him? Anyways, so Matthew Robertson, Buknevich, Strom, and their first this year. And uh, like I said, their short-term contracts. Uh, I doubt you're going to get Kako. I maybe they might, depending on what their projection for Kako is right now. Possibly Kako's in there, but again, they're going to have to give up. You're going to have to take salary back. They have too many guys that they have to sign right away here. Like we'll look at it. Uh, if they want to sign Buknevich, they have to sign Buknevich. Of course, you've got Lafreniere in a couple years. Kratzoff, Kako that I just mentioned is going to need a new contract. Zabonajad going to need a new contract. Uh, Fox, of course, they're going to have to sign. These are all going to be big number, big deal, big, uh, big contracts. Or, you know, bridge contracts, but still, they're going to be pushing the line. And putting a Marner contract in there, they're going to have to give up some contracts in order to make sure that they can sign everybody else. Or, as a general manager, you're thinking, those guys are part of the deal, even though they're not going to. Because if we have to trade them off, then uh, that's part of the that those are players that we can't afford to have on the contract. 
So it's part of the deal. You see what I mean? It's all asset management. Tell me what you think if you're a Rangers fan. Do you like Marner? Do you want Marner in there? Would you have any chance of taking him at all? Uh, Toronto, to, uh, we just did uh, LA, Detroit. I could do some more here if anybody's interested. Put it down in the comment section. Where do you think Marner would go? Do you think Toronto should trade Marner at all? Do you think they should just keep on rolling with what they got and building around what they have? Let me know. I could be wrong here. I'm doing this on the fly. Uh, personally, for me, I think Marner is a really good option. I think I'm on the fence on it. Um, I love Marner. And this has nothing to do with whether Marner's good or not. And you may out there may think, you know, because you saw what he did in the playoffs, think he doesn't have it. I personally don't agree. I think he's a great player. He's got it, and he's going to be. Uh, he's going to be. He's still going to be great. But you tell me what you think. That's my full forty-two, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for subscribing. Okay, bye.